Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're looking at something fairly unique, and this is a project management tool specifically for game developers. It's called Codex, and by the way, I'm gonna call it Codex over and over and over again. Something in my brain just can't get over the idea that that word isn't Codex. But anyways, this is kind of, I think the easiest way to think about it is, this is Trello for game development. If you've ever used Trello, it's a project and task-oriented system. This one though is a little bit different in its approach. It's inspired by the concept of trading cards, and again, and this one is very much focused on game development. You got tools here like uh, Discord integration, game design documents can be uh, directly integrated into your cards, uh, open development, share any part of your project on the web so the rest of the communities know what's going on. So if you've got a game and you want to make it somewhat public, like, you know, what your tasks are or your works in progress, whatever, you can share that out. Uh, you've got a real-time notification system that was actually inspired by the Civilization games um, and on and on and on. It goes, um, so it integrates into a number of different systems such as GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, and so on. Uh, this one is actually, um, it, it's, it's weirdly, okay, they merged or they acquired or they were acquired by a company called Manchkin and Mensch. I'm, I know I mangled that one, but this is a game developer for, made up of developers from Spec Ops The Line. They were using... Um, Codex in their own projects for a number of years. They liked it, so they kind of came on board. So that makes the team behind Codex quite a bit larger. Uh, they've been using it in production for over three years now, convinced that it's great. So they've kind of formed together. Now this is a very game dev focused tool. There's also a uh, free tier available for teams of up to, I believe, three in size. We'll get to some of the pricing details in just a second. But first, let's go take a look at Codex in action. Now, as you probably guessed already, this is running in my browser, as you can see right here um, and you've kind of got a collection of cards you can reorganize cards you can um, change the ordering you can uh, have hashtags and filter down by the hashtags um, you'll also notice here I've got a couple of cards that are ghost cards that means they're not shared with the rest of my team now sharing with your team takes a slightly different approach and that is the use of decks these are decks of cards you get the analogy here so far and what you basically got is a collection of cards like so and anytime you can come into one of these cards and you'll see here uh, I I've edited it and I'm actually using uh, Markdown. If you never use Markdown, it's kind of like HTML Lite. It allows you to do things like uh, bulleted lists. I can also do something like, my Markdown skills suck, but let me just try this. So a new bullet point with a checkbox, check me. And then I'll do one more with an X in there, checked me all right so i think i'm right in my approach yeah so there you see you can add check boxes in um you can add checked items in there on top of that you've got the ability to specify effort and priority on something at the same time we can also come into any particular card i can hit a dollar sign and we can uh, tag in other cards that i've already done so i can bring in so say i want to link to here uh, that now links that particular card in here. At the same time, I can also use, uh, I believe it's an at, yeah, and then tag in a person like so. Uh, as mentioned earlier on, you can add tags to cards and so on. Uh, we can change things out here, so we can also add subcards like we have right here. You can attach files into these particular things, so drop in an individual file, uh, uh, say like a PNG or an Excel file or whatever that goes with that particular card. Uh, you've got full conversations that you can put here. So uh, what's up folks? Like so, and then control enter to commit. And then you can have threaded conversations that go along with the card. Now, if I am particularly involved in this actual card, I can go ahead and I can add that card to my hand. Now, if I go back to my hand, we will find that card is there for me. And you're gonna see anything that is uh, from a deck it's going to have uh, other details. So as you see, um, this one has milestones. We'll get to milestones in a second, but these ones, again, are ghosts. Those are local to me only, whereas these ones are, uh, you know, from Dex, and, but uh, applicable or assigned to me. So that's kind of how you, you break down and you do tasks. Uh, multiple people can check out a card. I don't have a lot of experience with this because I've tested this as a single user from this point on. But there's quite a bit of functionality kind of embedded in here. And then the cool thing, again, is when you start drilling down into things, you can see a complete history of what happened with that card. Uh, you can, again, add subcards into a particular card. We've got wide mode, so you got more room to work with things. We saw the editing, and then we've got properties for the card, so you can set the priority levels of things. So this is a high priority card, for example, and you noticed it automatically sorted in. So we could also have a medium 
And then we, so we could have another card in here with different tiers and they would all sort accordingly. So you can do at a glance and see things. And then once again, you can tag things with a particular tag. So when we come back here, uh, I could go in and search by hashtags, just filter down to the bug ones, and then you'll see just those ones shown. I think I can also hide out. Oh, so and or, or and. Okay, I don't know how to actually focus down on stuff here. And you see you've got some quick editing tools for it up here. A milestone uh, to work with. We can export our cards out. We can archive them. We can duplicate them and so on. So once I'm done here, the other thing that we've kind of got to demonstrate on this one, uh, here is your, your project configuration, etc. So you can have multiple projects that you're involved with. And then as you add them or hide them or turn them off, all the other things for them. So for example, decks. Uh, I've turned that one off. I come back down here, turn playground back on, and then you're going to see I have an additional deck down here. Now, I actually, I moved this card from that deck to that one. So as you can see, you can really easily configure these things. Adding new decks is also really straightforward. You can upload your own images to, to handle them. So let's say we got here, and we'll call this one Bad Code Ideas, and then boom. So now you're in there and again, adding uh, cards to a deck, super simple here to kind of add it in there as well. You can automatically add it to your hand. And then finally, what we get into is milestones. Milestones is basically where you get into, you know, you've got deadlines and things that are uh, required or so on. So here I tagged in at Mike to have to do this. You can see here that milestone is there and I've got the cards to work on. I got zero days left to do it. So let's say I move forward uh, in time so I could add a new uh, card and so you can add a card directly from here. I could set the milestone uh, accordingly over here. So I could say, uh, okay, how do I add the new milestone? Hmm. Oh, it's up here, up in the timeline. So I could say on the 28th, uh, drop dead date, like so. And we'll create a milestone for that. And then once we've got that milestone in place, you can see this guy right here. Uh, we can start adding cards directly to it, or we could add existing cards to that actual milestone. Again, this is the area I kind of played with the least because quite frankly, it's just me using this stuff, uh, but kind of gives you an idea of what Codex is all about. So really, you've got this analogy of a bunch of uh, decks, and decks can be thought of as you know processes or tasks or events or, or whatever. I guess milestones would be events. So decks are things that you need to track or to work on or whatever. Within those, you have cards and then each individual person has their hand. These are the things that they are directly responsible for. So again, I can add an item right here. So I'll just say, this is just for me. It's the same workflow all the way through, but since I'm saving this to my hand, once again, it's got that little ghost icon. So you can see that this is just for me. So if I wanted to change that, I could actually take this guy later on and I could add it to a deck, make it you know part of so the rest of the community can see. And then once again, on top of this, you also have things like um, the full history, the conversations around it. So it's a way of organizing your workflow around uh, individual cards and those cards are organized into decks and those decks can be shared across the community so you can you can pull out a card into your hand that is actually owned by someone else and in their personal deck as well if that makes sense and then of course we have uh, the ability to search through our cards like so and get the results out there. So in a nutshell, that is a very high level look at what Codex is all about. If you're looking to manage your team, got a bunch of people working together, this could be a good uh, system for you. As you can see here, you've got some uh, control over your organization, um, how, how effort is described, how milestones will be working. Uh, how time tracking should work. Um, again, you've also got things like integration into uh, your Discord server, Slack, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, and you can actually even import from uh, Trello. Um, and then finally, I guess we're gonna get into uh, the actual uh, user aspect of this. So as of right now, you can see I have a single uh, user in here. You can create an account completely for free. So don't be scared off of this billing stuff. Well, now let's finally discuss the billing side of things. So right now uh, you can get a free tier here. It's limited to three users and five projects uh, with one gigabyte of total storage. So if you're starting to attach files to uh, individual cards, you could start using that up pretty quick and of course, three users, you could hit that limitation pretty quick. But you see here, you get pretty much everything except for a tailored onboarding and the ability to self-host out of that. Uh, next up, we get into the uh, pro tier. This is uh, basically can have an unlimited number of users, unlimited number of projects, and each user gets five gigabytes of storage. Uh, plus you get priority email support, 
uh, otherwise your settings are pretty basically the same. So what you're looking at is five gigs of storage per user and to get past that three um, user limit, you're looking at about five euro. Generally a euro and a USD are somewhere comparable in value depending on politics and idiocy and all that stuff. So you're looking at about five or six bucks a month uh, per user to use this guy. If you have a team of larger than three or if your total size requirements are greater than one gigabyte. But be honest, with a small team working together, if you're not storing a bunch of documents with, with the cards, I can really see checking this out at free and getting genuine value out of it. And then finally, you get up to the enterprise tier, kind of the same thing. It's just uh, unlimited file storage and the ability to self-host uh, and uh, tailored onboarding. So obviously that's a uh, that's a big deal there as well. A bit more, you know, breakdowns of, of what's here. There's some stuff there for education and nonprofits and so on. But for the most part, it is pretty straightforward on the whole. The other cool thing here is there is a manual. The manual basically breaks down everything you need to know about everything we just kind of briefly looked at there. Uh, so individual tasks, you wanna walk through how the workflow of things work. Uh, it, it is well-documented step-by-step, et cetera. Everything here is pretty much well-documented. So uh, if you wanna get started with Codex, it, it Codex, yeah, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you know, just basically head on over to codex.io. Uh, again, as long as you are um, a small team, say three people or less, uh, you can really check this one out completely for free. But if you are a larger team and you're getting value out of it, five euro per person, that's a pretty reasonable price in my opinion, but I'd love to hear what you have to say about it in comments down below. Now, of course, there's also Trello and Trello is the dominant player in this space, but their workflow is not necessarily optimized around the idea of game development. And to be honest, I don't use Trello a whole lot other than as like a, an end user. So I, I look at other people's published Trello boards. So I don't know about the costing behind it or whatever, but uh, if you're out there and you've made a decision between Codex and Trello, I imagine other users would love to hear why you pick this over Trello. I don't have enough Trello experience myself to really suggest one or the other. So hopefully one of you guys can step up and do my job for me. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think of Codex in the commerce, um, you know, comments down below and all that. Also, by the way, a few people have been having trouble with notifications on YouTube because, hey, YouTube, uh, just be aware there is a uh, Twitter feed and I have Game From Scratch Discord as well, where you can also get notification of all videos as they come out. Also, Discord community is a great place to hang out. I will talk the link down below. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.